Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday, August the 10th. It's good to be with you this morning. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 101. I will sing of the loyalty and justice to you, O Lord, I will sing. I will, I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perse perse perversiveness of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. One who secretly slanders a neighbor, I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not tolerate. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land, so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Morning by morning I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to 15. Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait at tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they, what they had said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, and the proselyte of Antioch. There these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen full of grace and power, to great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Syrians, Alexandrians, and others from Sicily and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes, then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him saying that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like that of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from John's Gospel, reading from chapter 4 and verse 1 to 26. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus, heard that the Pharisees, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judah and started back to Galilee. But he had, got, had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of the ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, 
and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks, who drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when we will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. The worship, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks, as, seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. The key to understanding the story of the Samaritan woman at the well is to realize that this is one of the I am passages of John's gospel in which Jesus portrays himself as a fulfillment of something in life. It's one of the passages in John where Jesus takes the everyday things, bread, water, gates, light, a vine, to explain who he is. Firstly, Jesus is in the Samaritan town of Sychar, the Samaritans were substantially looked down upon by the Jews because they were the product of the split between the northern kingdom Israel and Judah and were seen as religiously and politically polluted, polluted by Jews of Jesus' day. In fact, the woman is surprised that Jesus asked her for water because he is a Jewish male. Jesus takes the lead in the conversation and indicates she might respond a little differently if she knew who he really was. He turns the request on its head and suggests that it's she who needs water, not him, but of a sort that only he can offer. He points out that while this is a famous well, the one that Jacob gave to Joseph, its significant pales in comparison to what he offers her as living water that will quench her inner thirst for all time. As Jesus points out, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Secondly, Jesus stops at the well at midday and asks the woman for water. Culturally, the women who drew water at that time of day were those who did not go there in the cool of the day because they had been socially rejected by their own community. It is soon apparent that this is the case with this woman. Jesus asks her to go and call her husband, and she indicates that she's not married. She points out the man she is currently living with was not her husband, and she has been married to five other men before her. There are multiple reasons she may have been married this often, and one of them is that she had been repeatedly divorced because of the ease by which people could get divorced in Jesus' day. In addition, because women were economically so vulnerable, remarriage was often an inevitable choice. She throws out a religious snag to indicate to, to Jesus that what he has to offer her has no religious significance to her because her people do not practice the same faith as his people. Jesus responds by indicating the full universal nature of the message, that God is not geographically limited to Jerusalem or Samaria, but it is a God who calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. This inspires a point of recognition in her. I know that Messiah is coming. It is then that we come to the core of the story. I am he, the one who is speaking to you, says Jesus. The story then changes tack because the disciples arrive on the scene and are astonished to see that Jesus is breaking all the social norms 
by speaking to this woman. It then breaks into two very distinct streams, an account of others responding to Jesus and the response of his disciples on the significance of what they've just witnessed. The story within the story is where Jesus teaches his disciples the true nature of his commission, that the harvest is ripe for the gathering and then they need to get their priorities right. That rather than being obsessed with religious niceties, they need to simply see what is before them and to spring into action in offering the world the message of hope of who Christ is. The second stream involves a woman become a messenger of hope. That while she has suffered rejection by her own community, the love and acceptance that she has experienced through Jesus so transforms her that she finds it within herself to go back to that same community and to invite them into new life with Christ, the living water. Pray God that we might find Christ in the everyday things of life and, in discovering him there, share our story of faith even with those who might have rejected us. And like the disciples, might we find a new perspective in Jesus that challenges our prejudice, assumptions and bigotry in a way that offers hope to others. Amen. We say, Hear, O Israel, together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. In our litany this morning, our response is, Lord, have mercy. God of grace, help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and in mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Lord, have mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. And grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. We pray our colleagues together. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.